What's up guys? Welcome to Gimli, Manitoba, where negative 10 degrees Celsius is considered mild weather. What? We're here with Mercedes-Benz at the largest temporary racetrack, and I'm about to show you how we shot this intro sequence. All right, it's super cold out here, so we want to start working fast. The first shot that we want to get is on a gimbal. We're going to use the A7 III with a 60 to 35 millimeter F2.8 G Master. I got myself a radio here. We got David, who's in the E63S, a 603 horsepower car. He's on standby there. I've briefed him on the shot that we need. So what we're doing right now is there's a giant circle that he's going to be drifting around. And we're on the inside of the circle, so that means that we're in a pretty safe area. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to get this gimbal shot, and we're going to try to push in with all these sweet fishing huts in the background because it's pretty much the only thing that's here. And what we're going to try to do is get this establishing shot where I push in over the snowbank, and then David in slow motion is ripping in the E63S around this corner. All right, we got the gimbal set up here. We're shooting with the crane too. All right, David, we're good. Uh, let me know when you're ready. I don't know how to use a walkie-talkie. Roger, go, I'm ready. Woo, killer start. Let's do playback on that guy. Shot number two, the light is looking really good. Uh, we're also a little cold, so what we're gonna do is we have a car on standby that's holding all our gear, as well as just an extra team that can take care of stuff. We're gonna pop into that car right now, and we're gonna start shooting some drone footage and also just warm up. All right, so we will be shooting with the DJI Mavic 2 with the Hasselblad sensor. This thing is probably one of the best pieces of equipment. Oh, it's gonna be so cold, I gotta expose my fingers. I'm gonna throw the Polar Pro filters on it, uh, just because it's a little too bright for the, for the standard kind of glass they put on the front of this. When you're working with clients like Mercedes-Benz, you always want to really go the extra mile to make sure your footage looks the best that it possibly can be. Classic, anybody who owns a DJI knows this dance. And then we drop. If you guys don't know what that dance is, it's a calibration dance. Also, I'm sorry if it's really windy. Super strong winds right now, so we're gonna try to do our best to get the best footage that we can. I'm just gonna switch the profiles because it's an H264 and I wanna shoot the highest quality that we can. So I'm switching it to H265. I'm switching it to the D-Log. And then the nice thing about the drone is you can actually turn on a LUT and a color profile. Just switch it from not auto white balance. Always make sure your white balance is set when you guys are doing this stuff. So I'm waiting for David to pass the shot and I'm gonna push through and try to get nice and low. And I'm gonna push through so I don't see him in this first shot push through this smoke, and then uh, the winds will push in a little hard and get up. It's kind of nice because there's like some real fresh powder right now. So like as David's hitting that fresh snow, it's really kicking up the snow. So it looks really, really good. We got about 20 minutes of power. When you're shooting in cold temperatures like this, always be aware of like your battery temperature. That's always a huge thing. As you can see in this shot, I'm just kind of waiting for him to like start up again. And we're gonna try to like get this parallax action happening. So we have about seven minutes of battery and then we're gonna move on to some other shots. The light's starting to look really good. We're almost at the point where the drone's gonna start beeping really loud and I can't turn it off and it will just annoy everybody in the car. I'm gonna bring the drone nice and low so we can get a lot of movement happening. Basically, this is my last attempt at this shot right now because battery is mad. <laughs> oh, that was so close, but looks so good. I actually thought I was gonna hit the car and that didn't happen. And now my drone is like, please land because you're a maniac. A friend of mine is like a professional drone operator on high-end car commercials and they'll always fly the drone super close to the ground because the further you are away from the car and the drone, it just doesn't have any impact because there's no real movement. So what you want to do is you want to get a bit closer to the action. So on that note, let's jump into the car again. Let's set up some GoPros and try to get some fun shots while this sun is just... I don't know why I keep doing this. It's not a thing. David's done a bunch of these productions in the past, 
so he knows a couple of really good spots to put these GoPros where we can get some really interesting shots. Also, fun fact, normally I would ask David to turn off the car for audio issues, but if you turn off the car here in Gimli, things all freeze up. We want a nice, solid mount if we can get it. While we take this quick moment, fun fact, David's 21 years old. How long have you been driving? Well, driving like this. <laughs> driving like this. Like this. Yeah. Um, probably been doing this program for four years now, yeah. so four years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the first time I went driving with David, he was 18 when he took me around on a hot lap. All right, so I'm using this like nice little Joby suction cup that I got because I really like the fact that I can put an extension arm on it like this. Might be a little bouncy, but what I like about it is that this camera here, the Osmo Action, has this thing called the Rocksteady built in it, so it should keep everything fairly smooth. Let's do uh, 4K, 24, nice and wide. I think people like to get caught up a little bit when they're shooting with action cameras to do everything in slow motion. I don't think we need to do it in this case because I'd like to see how fast this car can go. So if you mount it right up on top of the roof here, yep. and looking down over top, that's pretty cool because you can see the angle through the corners. You can definitely use apps. I don't know why I didn't. So we're gonna throw one more GoPro. We have three of them, I guess two GoPros and one Osmo Action. We're gonna throw this one on a head mount so we can get some driving shots. But for the GoPro with the POV perspective, what I like to do is set it to 1440 resolution, which means that you have the ability to crop in post afterwards because it's basically capturing instead of 16 by nine, which is a rectangle, it's actually capturing a square. So in post production, if I'm like, oh, actually most of the action was down here, I can crop in on that area. It's a little low res, but I think for this it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so just like if you can go and do the whole lap just before the sun is completely gone, yeah. um, give me two laps and then we'll double check the cameras to make sure that they're still looking good. David's gonna be out there probably for like the next five minutes or so. And in the meantime, we're actually gonna set up to get some of the longer shots. So I brought the 100 to 400 with me. And what I wanna do is I wanna get like close-ups of some of the action and go and find some of those like pockets of snow. So when he hits it in slow motion, it really like kicks up and looks super epic. I also waited to shoot this after we shot the drone stuff because the nice thing about this camera when we're shooting with like the a7r3 or the a7 III is i can boost the iso and it still looks really good and we'll match the scene that we shot before rather than having something like the drone in the sky and it being super noisy so you always want to keep these things into consideration when you're shooting something like this with very limited time i actually don't think i'm going to use an nd filter when shooting video for this because i'm going to be shooting super slow motion which is 120 frames a second on this camera which means that my shutter will be one over 250 and with this low light right now, I think we'll be okay. Let's go outside. Whoa, it's cool. This is gonna look insane. One of the things that I realized with the Sony is it actually looks better when you can shoot with a long lens and look through the electronic viewfinder. So instead of using the monitor, I'm actually just gonna slam this thing up against my eye and try to get the shots. Nice thing in the 120 frames a second that you have a bit of forgiveness when shooting handheld. With every video that you're creating, you always have to keep in mind, especially for YouTube, we gotta get thumbnails, we gotta get photos. Clients also love this stuff. So we're gonna grab some photos right now. This is the moment that videographers dream of. Ah, just, ah, it, it, it all came together. All right, with the last little bit of light that we have left, I'm choosing it for this shot to close out the video. Hopefully you guys learned a little something on the BTS on how to shoot for a commercial client like Mercedes Benz. This is the hustle that goes in to capturing this content, especially when we're given one hour and it's small T to make it happen. I think we've created some really great stuff today. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you wanna see more behind the scenes videos, I'm super down to do more with some of the other clients. So comment below if you'd like to see more. Press the like button, that stuff actually means the world to us. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. And let's end the video out on some joyride content. <laughs>